All right, everybody. This is Brian. I'm uh, going to explain the severe weather risk for the next couple days. Um, first of all, I'll show you what Cobb shows for for precipitation. They should say best chance for precip is between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. You see, the totals are uh, not too bad except uh, later on it could be some heavy rain. Um, the College of DuPage models show 7 a.m. Tuesday, 1 p.m. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, which is actually uh, midnight Wednesday UTC. You can see by 7 p.m. precipitation amounts in a half inch range up near St. Cloud in Alexandria. Uh, okay, we'll cycle through. Uh, here's 1 a.m. See a lot of rain that forecasted for the uh, southern half into northeast Minnesota. And then uh, 7 a.m. still rain. 1 p.m. Wednesday. Then another round shows up Wednesday evening. There's a better chance of seeing heavier storms that Wednesday night in the Twin Cities. Now we'll look at uh, the HRR models. This is almost like a satellite loop, but it's it's long wave radiation. I'm not sure what exactly how it works, but you'll see throughout the day. There's 1 p.m. looks rather decent outside. And then we go into the afternoon, there's 4 p.m. Thunderstorms start developing out in uh, South Dakota through western Minnesota through central Minnesota. And then as you can see through 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9, 10, they continue to develop. The thing you have to know is there's no, there's no other storms down here taking the moisture, so this is a good possibility. For this model, it's short range, so I best I got us till 10 p.m. for uh, storms. I mean, uh, later on I can get more information. But here's your zero, your surface to one kilometer shear. It's the best place to find tornadic activity. Here's 7 a.m. today. Here's uh, 1 p.m., 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see 6 p.m., these pinks start popping up in uh, central Minnesota and western Minnesota and then as you go through the afternoon pretty good uh, area of dark blues here which is 55 knots of shear so this is the area to look for tornadic activity throughout the evening and then there's 10 p.m. like I said that's the best I got for the Twin Cities but you can say you can see that most of the Twin Cities are dry through 10 p.m. And then this uh, final one is the uh, lightning activity. You'll see uh, a little bit of light lightning activity popping up in South Dakota around f after 4 p.m. 5 p.m. things really start popping. And then uh, through the evening, the storms intensify again. So as you can see, this line right here, this is where thunderstorm activity should be by 10 p.m. Most of southeast Minnesota is dry. Now I'll go into the uh, my favorite here, buff kit. I've got other things annoying me, trains and such. Um, we'll go into uh, the overview. I'll clear everything out so you can see from scratch. Here we'll drop it down to 24 hours. There's 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Okay, so first we'll go contours, elevated cape, which I'll show you again how cape works. 200 joules. This is all in joules. As you can see, it gets by uh, 8, 9 p.m. We start to get around 1,000 joules of elevated cape. And then by 1 a.m., pretty good area of cape. Hail cape is... Uh, just another good indicator too of where you might see hail. It doesn't seem as impressive as it was yesterday, but still the potential is there for hail. Aviation, we can go with uh, cloud base. 
Here's 7 p.m. Looks rather, you know, rather scattered clouds and not really a cloud base until after 7 p.m. Then it drops. The base is to 5,000, and then by after 1 a.m. they drop much lower than that. Visibility is a good indicator too, where precipitation might be falling. As you can see, uh, after 8 or 9 p.m., visibility has dropped to under a well eighth of a mile. This isn't the greatest ac accurate model but the other thing okay when we look at temperature 2 meter temperature and dew point two big indicators okay so to the today the high should be upper 70s and then uh, the dew points start out in the 50 climb up off 60 after 8 p.m. you know this is just computer models this is just what it's saying it's supposed to happen then we'll go back to winds um, we'll go to the five knot. Winds will be out of the south southeast, 15 to 20 miles per hour with higher gusts, and then the precipitation you can see have it develop after eight, but it should hold off till probably more like 10 p.m. And then uh, we'll go on. We'll close this. Well, I suppose you want to see clouds too. So scattered low clouds, and then right here is where they really thicken. I can probably go higher than, uh, oops, not that high. Up to 35,000 feet is showing clouds, but any thunderstorm can get higher than that. I'll show you uh, how CAPE works too. So we'll go back to current time is 11, 11 a.m. And then you can see uh, some elevated CAPE right around 200 joules. Um, there's not much of anything else. Lifted index is above zero. The totals are is an indicator of thunderstorms. Anything over f 50 is a good chance of thunderstorms. I'll go through the evening. You'll see the cape start to develop right here. This yellow and this uh, this line here, but not too impressive right there. But uh, as you can see through the evening, the cape gets bigger. Now this is where they call a cap, even though there's only a convective and available of five joules. Temperature uh, at 5,000 feet is 8.9 or so. No, no not that. 11.2. But at, at uh, 5,900 feet, it's 13 degrees. It actually gets warmer with height. This That's what causes a cap. So it's an elevated cap, so it's not a surface cap. This will prevent convection until you break this cap. This here is where the cape is, 15,000 feet. I switched it to feet so you can understand. This is what the air temperature should be at uh, 15,000 feet. This is what it actually is supposed to be. That's how you get a lift in index. Of, it's four degrees colder than it's supposed to be. That increases lift. Now we'll watch this cap through the evening. It starts to shrink after 7, 8. Now and after 9 p.m. the cap is gone. And now you, all you have is this long, skinny cape, which anywhere it's colder than it's supposed to be at the uh, that given temperature. And then this is where your equilibrium is. Equilibrium is where the cloud shouldn't go any higher. It's 37,500 feet. It says right there. That's by 9 p.m. You can see rain. Uh, lift index minus 3. Heavy precepts a good one, too. Um, you can find where the low level jet is. There's 10, 11, 12, 1. Turns red. Speed of the storms are 1 knot, which indicates very little movement. A long, skinny cape, which is not notoriously known for ex excessive severe weather, but there's, a, there's pl plenty of shear. So there's uh, 2 a.m., went to 3 dots, which is a heavier precip. And then as you can see, 4 a.m., everything just kind of drops off. But then you look at tomorrow afternoon, there's 4 p.m., 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 p.m., they show more rain. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, there's four dots showing 1.76 inches of precipitable water. Not a whole lot of cape. It's very long and skinny, which doesn't, uh, doesn't do much for severe weather more likely heavy rain but uh 
the holding graph is uh, we'll go back to when uh, tonight this here's a good holding graph which is it changes with uh, direction with height which causes a shear here's where we got a shear by 10 p.m. around 40 over 40 to 45 knots of shear but only just under 1000 joules of cape not too impressive but uh... you can go to Conrad which is a good indicator of the convective research animation display if you look at this current summary shallow cyclonic right moving supercell the initial cell involves into a small moderately strong cyclonic supercell Moderate surface rotations develops after 1.5 hours. However, the vertical wind shear is too strong relative to the cold pool circulation to promote sufficient lifting for new ordinary cell growth along the gust front. And then uh, they also have one that actually tells you what a radar signature might look like. So that's the four kilometer. You'll see this uh, little blob here, how it animates. And you'll see how the storms are, will develop in a typical in a in a pattern similar to this. It's not going to be exact, and I don't think they're going to be moving south. But I don't know why they do that. But anyway, it's kind of a neat thing to add to your buff kit. Um, there's plenty of websites out there that tell you how to add Conrad to your buff kit, and then uh, of course the convection. You know so. I, I expect thunderstorms to move in after 10, maybe, you know, some damaging winds and large hail are the main threat, although early there could be a few isolated tornadoes, mainly west, but uh, generally a uh, active evening along into uh, Wednesday afternoon, so um, just uh, be on the lookout for thunderstorms this afternoon, and uh, we'll check you uh, if you have any questions leave a message thanks